The institution of slavery in the United States was upheld through a brutal system of physical and psychological control mechanisms designed to subjugate and dehumanize enslaved people. The methods of control were varied and complex, rooted in violence and fear, aimed at maintaining a rigid social order and ensuring the economic profitability of slavery. This video delves into the harsh realities of these punishment and control mechanisms, exploring specific practices such as whipping, branding, and mutilation, and examining how fear and violence were systematically used to uphold the institution of slavery. Whipping was perhaps the most common and feared method of punishment on plantations. The lash of a whip, typically made of leather and often embedded with metal shards or nails, was used to inflict excruciating pain. Whippings were administered for a wide range of infractions, from perceived laziness or insolence to attempted escape. The number of lashes could vary, sometimes reaching into the hundreds, leaving deep scars known as keloids that bore testament to the brutality endured by the enslaved. Public whippings served as a spectacle, intended to instill fear not only in the individual being punished, but also in other enslaved people who were forced to witness the torment. This communal aspect of punishment reinforced the power dynamics between the enslavers and the enslaved, demonstrating the severe consequences of disobedience or resistance. Branding was another cruel practice used to mark enslaved individuals as property. Heated metal brands were pressed into the skin, leaving permanent scars. These marks were often initials or symbols representing the enslaver's ownership. Branding served a dual purpose. It was a physical punishment that inflicted severe pain, and it acted as a lifelong identifier, making escape more difficult by permanently marking the enslaved as someone's property. Mutilation, including the severing of ears, fingers, or toes, was used as a punishment for more severe offenses such as repeated attempts to escape. This form of punishment was particularly barbaric as it inflicted lifelong disabilities and acted as a constant reminder of the enslaved person's attempt to reclaim their freedom. It was also a visible deterrent to others who might consider escape or rebellion. Enslaved people were subjected to daily humiliations that stripped them of their dignity and reinforced their status as inferior beings. They were often given degrading tasks, subjected to demeaning language, and denied basic human courtesies. This constant belittlement was designed to erode their sense of self-worth and ensure their complete submission. One of the most devastating psychological punishments was the separation of families. Enslavers would sell children, spouses, and parents to different plantations, knowing that the threat of family separation was a powerful tool to maintain control. This practice inflicted deep emotional pain and trauma, breaking the bonds that provided enslaved people with emotional support and strength. Sexual violence was a pervasive and horrific aspect of slavery. Enslaved women were often subjected to rape and sexual exploitation by their enslavers. This form of violence was used to assert dominance, control, and to create a climate of fear. The children born from these assaults were often enslaved as well, perpetuating the cycle of exploitation and suffering. To prevent escape and rebellion, enslavers employed patrols and slave catchers. These groups, often composed of poor whites who were given authority to enforce slavery laws, roamed the countryside, capturing runaway slaves and returning them to their enslavers for a reward. The presence of these patrols instilled a constant fear of being caught and punished, deterring attempts to escape. The legal systems in the southern states were designed to support and perpetuate slavery. Laws were enacted to criminalize any form of resistance or escape by enslaved people. These laws also imposed severe penalties on those who aided runaways. For example, the Fugitive Slave Act of 1850 mandated that escaped slaves be returned to their enslavers and imposed heavy fines on anyone who helped them. In times of unrest or potential rebellion, militias and armed forces were mobilized to suppress any signs of resistance. The fear of violent retaliation by well-armed militias kept many enslaved people from organizing or participating in uprisings. The brutal suppression of rebellions, such as Nat Turner's Rebellion in 1831, served as stark warnings of the lethal consequences of resistance. Surveillance and the use of informants were common practices on plantations. Enslavers encouraged some enslaved people to act as informants, 
reporting any signs of dissent or plans to escape. This practice sowed distrust and division among the enslaved, weakening their ability to unite and resist. Enslavers often use psychological manipulation to maintain control. They foster dependence by providing minimal comforts and rewards for compliance, creating a system of conditional favors that could be withdrawn at any moment. Enslaved people were made to feel that their survival depended entirely on the goodwill of their enslavers. The physical and psychological punishments used to control enslaved people left lasting scars on individuals and communities. However, the resilience and resistance of enslaved people were equally remarkable. Despite the brutal regime of punishment and control, acts of defiance and rebellion persisted. From subtle acts of sabotage and work slowdowns to outright rebellions and escapes, enslaved people continuously sought to reclaim their dignity and freedom. The legacy of these punishments and the systems of control that enforce slavery have had profound and enduring impacts on American society. The institutionalized racism and systemic inequalities that originated in slavery continue to affect the descendants of enslaved people. Understanding the mechanisms of control used during slavery is crucial for comprehending the broader historical and social contexts of racial injustice and for working towards a more equitable future.